So sorry, I was so nervous. So go ahead. Yeah, another good question. Um, so through my research, I found that the average wind speed was actually 31 miles per hour with Longmont, so that's more than enough, right? And um, just recently, we had a meeting with our mentor, me and Laura. Um, Hannah, yeah, thank you. Hannah Mulroy, and um, she gave us some policies regarding uh, the wind turbines, and you can actually put them on the ground and on buildings. So uh, it's too hard to find my presentation slide now, but my design has integrated both of those. Thank you. Hopefully. Other questions? Yeah. There you go. Thanks. Um, that was an incredibly interesting presentation. Thank you, everybody. Um, when you first started, you said that there were three variables that um, you were taking into account for each of the particular sections. Um, and like one was economic and then social, and I, I apologize, I forget the third. But I was wondering how you guys prioritize those. Or are you trying to find a, a balance between them? Like, how do you decide which aspect is more important? Chairman Lane, Commissioner Norton, thank you for that question. Great question. So those are the three pillars of sustainability. And the easiest way to remember them is people, planet, and profit. Right? So for the people, social, for the planet, environmental, and profit, economic. And when all three of those are working well together, that's when we hit the sweet spot of sustainability. So one is not prioritized over the other. Thank you. Although it does. Yes, I'm going to leave it there. You're welcome. <laughs> That sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? No? Um, I had a couple. Um, I, I was. A, I do very much appreciate, a, a, apart from all the energy uh, focus, uh, a couple of things that are important here in Longmont. I mean, there was some um, mention of honoring the agricultural history, which is a big deal uh, here, and it's something that we do, um, that we have on the forefront of our mind, but we do struggle with, right, in, in today's world. Um, and um, just a, a few notions of the historic preservation, you, you know, there was a mention of a sense of place and how that connects, connects community uh, and a, a kind of a sense of informing the public. So I was a little curious just about how much time was spent just even understanding what what's there right now in, in terms of historic, you know, buildings that have the potential for historic preservation, how much of that was, was looked at. I mean, a lot of focus on energy, but we're the Historic Preservation Commission, so I'm gonna ask. We anticipated this hardball question. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Chairman Lane, thank you so much for that question. Um, yes, we had some really great conversations. And so part of this project and process is to dig deep into these areas. And as you know, we've spent six weeks on this course and it's a six credit studio course. So we're in the studio four days of the week for about five hours a piece plus their 20 extra hours on top. Um, to catch up to where your wonderful planners are um, was an enormous task. And so we met with them once a week to try and go through all of these steps to understand the historic preservation and how it is reflected in the city of Longmont. And um, I actually was wondering if Michael or Ty wanted to talk in that regard to how far that we did go into the historic preservation our last meeting with our um, mentor planners was really interesting, looking at the historical districts on the site. And so my expertise is landscape architecture. And when we look at parks, we try and blend them together. And we started noticing with the historical districts, it was sort of, it's a little bit of a donut hole around in the site. And so we um, were trying to dig more into that to get more information. And hopefully over the next couple weeks, so this is sort of our draft midterm um, presentation to you all. So these questions are great for us to like go to the next level and see where we want to go with that. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to see if one of them wants Please. to answer that. Ty, do you want to give it a shot? Yeah. Oh, they both want to. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think uh, we were able to really hyper focus in on a couple of things from the ULI report that we were given. I don't remember what that acronym stands for, but um, one of it 
Urban Land Institute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so we were looking at that report, and um, one of the main things was the agricultural um, history in Longmont. So we are able to focus on that, and obviously the site includes the, um, the sugar mill, um, which was a huge part of it. Um, and um, one of our mentors, Tony Chacon, was able to give us a tour um, of that site um, from the outside and um, give us a little more um, context for that. Um, and so for my project in specific, which was the agricultural gradient, um, I was looking at historical preservation, not just in the physical sense, but as well as a sense of the timeline. Um, so that's why it goes from um, it goes from human power to animal power to the industrial revolution and then into the future. Um, so trying to preserve not only the um, the sugar factory and that building itself, but also preserving the culture around um, agriculture. Thank you. Yeah, and going off of the historic districts, um, the ones that we had found were not in the site. Uh, they're actually north of Third, um, which I believe includes the Roosevelt uh, Park. Uh, so looking into the steam site, um, I just wanted to draw connections from the sugar mill, uh, whether they're visual or educational. And yeah, um, I believe that uh, the tough part was finding buildings that were or could be considered historical within the steam site um, due to the districts being uh, north of third. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I just want to go on the record. I did give Michael a hard time about changing out the windows in his proposed barn. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say anything. Looks like they're long gone. I doubt glass We did take some allowances, being it's an educational experience. Um, well, I appreciate all that, and I think it's a, a great asset that you're able to spend the time. I mean, it's a good asset to the city of Longmont that you're able to take this time and, and really dive in. I hope that this information is going to get back not only just to staff, but to Stantec. I th Stantec's working on this, right? Um, so I hope you get a chance to meet with them and work with them and divulge all that information uh, to those folks as well. So thank you. Again, any last-minute no, we're all good. All right. Thanks again. I appreciate everybody coming here tonight and uh, give, providing us with this presentation. It was really enjoyable. Well, we appreciate you all, too, and the hard work that you do as volunteers. This city is great because of you. So thank you so much. Great. All right. Um, excellent. Well, uh, next item of new business would be an update on uh, Dickens' barn. And this Latin property? Yeah, um, just give you, uh, speaking of agricultural history, um, we did have an opportunity, staff met with um, the potential applicants for development of the site and talked through a couple of scenarios. Um, from a staff standpoint, we're trying to close a gap because we just want to be able to put in the improvements that are required to keep it standing. So we could use it for um, potential storage for whatever they need it for, for uh, the sandstone um, development across the street. Um, we're also, I think, going to be scheduled for, I think it was August 6th, do you remember, Brian, for the Parks Board? I think it's the, uh, the 8th. August Monday, Monday 8th. Monday the 8th, yeah. Yeah, so um, when we get close and we are sure we're on the agenda, I think we mentioned we'd like to reach out to one or more of you to help us kind of make the case for the preservation of the barn. Um, we also realize I think we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper to get a little bit better numbers as far as um, um, keeping it standing, basically. So um, we may go back to Gus and ask for a little bit more information. But we're proceeding along. It looks good. Great. Thanks for the update. Any questions from commissioners? No? All right. I will say, Thanks. ultimately, we will return to you um, because they still need approval of a preservation plan. And I think our indication is if we can preserve that barn, that would check that box. So um, they will be returning back to you, though, for right. formal approval. Right. I appreciate that. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for the update. All right. 
Um, next would be prior business. Is there anything? I don't see anything in nope. here. Don't think we have anything to talk about there. All right. Now we're down to uh, comments from HPC commissioners. Any commissioners like to make a comment? All right, Commissioner Jacoby. Since Sharon brought it up, um, I did give a tour of the historic east side, uh, what, a week ago, two weeks ago. Had 15 uh, people show up, which was a reasonable size group for a historic tour of that length, especially since I didn't have any advertising. I would echo her desire to get the museum to coordinate a little bit of uh, information out there for people who are interested, but we'll work on that down the road, and hopefully I'll do a tour in the fall. Thank you. No other comments? Okay. All right. Well, this overall was a good, um, good evening of information. Uh, let's see. Comments from um, Councilman Rodriguez is not here, so we'll skip that part, and we are now, uh, I'll now entertain a motion for adjournment. All right. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 We are officially adjourned. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks, Brian, Glenn.